Hello and welcome to another chat. This one is going to be about the military dolphins that have been deployed in Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We heard some of the uh, the headlines on this. Actually, I'm in a good position to talk about it because I broke the story in US Naval Institute News and all the other stories that you've seen on other news sites are following that. It's a topic that I've had some interest in for a few years. So let's get on with it. Like my other chats, it's unscripted. That's really obvious already, I know. Let's start with some context. In the Ukraine war, the dolphins are actually deployed to Sevastopol, which is on Crimea, and it's the main Russian naval base uh, in the region. And it's just across the water from Odessa, which is a major port city in Ukraine and a natural target for the Russian forces. Just also for context, the cruiser that was lost by Russia is about in the middle there. So Sevastopol is really near to the action, and it's where the vessels such as the cruiser operate from. Here's a satellite image of Sevastopol. This is supplied by Maxar to US Naval Institute. It's a brilliant picture. Um, you can see the naval areas. These are the main ones. There's more, but this is where the particular warships and submarines of interest would be. And every ship that comes in or out of that harbour has to go through a narrow opening at the at the front there. And that is um, where the dolphins are deployed. They're just inside the sea wall on the northern side of that harbour entrance. Every ship, say, has to go past there. For example, this is the cruiser that was lost. Um, I believe this is its last journey. It's a, it's a candid image that, of part of a video that a tourist took. And you can see that the ship's number's been painted out to make it harder to identify. Obviously, we'd have no trouble identifying exactly what ship that is. But it would have sailed immediately past where the dolphins are. And anyone wanting to come in or out of the harbour to attack those ships would also have to go past where the dolphins are. So here's a photograph of the place. Um, you can see an army truck. The dolphin pen is there in the water. We can see it clearer from satellite imagery, again from Maxar. There's the dolphin pen to the, to the north side. I've, the image is slightly rotated. Zooming in, there's the two pens. They're floating. They've got a divider across the middle. That allows them to uh, separate dolphins and open half the pen and not the other half. They also have a tender, which is, there's a pier there, which they can access it, and an army truck and so on. So it's a pretty small um, but self-contained deployment. So how do we get here? Um, we're going to cover why they why they use dolphins and so on, but let's talk a little bit about history. I'm not going to go into too much detail because there are plenty of books and sources on the history, but I think it's useful for a con some context. First, and this is quite interesting, the first use of marine mammals or training of marine mammals for naval purposes was actually in Sweden it, during World War II. Um, a Swedish scientist had the idea and started training them to detect submarines and torpedoes and so on. There's an excellent source on that in Swedish, but recommended. That's where the photograph comes from. It didn't last very long. I don't think it was very successful at the time. The one we've heard of and the one that came next was the US Navy program. And this started in, I think, the 60s. Certainly it was active by the 70s and it involved quite a lot of different types of marine mammal. Today, bottlenose dolphins and California sea lions are the main uh, mammals used. And they're used for mine clearance or detection of mine, should I say, counter diver and object retrieval. That's really useful. So picking up items from the seafloor. say I'm not going to go into history or too much detail there's plenty online they've been used in conflicts and so on 
But what I will mention is there's still a lot that people don't know about it. One of the very obscure things is that some US Navy SEALs together with EOD ordnance and small boat specialists um, were formed into a unit called the Very Shallow Water Detachment. And here is a vessel that they use, which hardly anyone knows about the low visibility craft. Really interesting. You can find out about this on my website, hisutton.com or Covert Shores. But back to the Russians. It started in Soviet Union, so before the fall of the USSR. The Russians, just like the US Navy, the Russian or Soviet Navy at the time, was interested in mine clearance, counter dive, and object retrieval, same missions. Additionally, I believe it's likely that some of them are used for intelligence gathering as well. So, a, a, a sea mammal with a camera on it investigating an underwater sonar array and those sorts of those sorts of targets additionally it's been rumored that they're being trained for sabotage it's been reported let's say it's been retained trained for sabotage put a bomb on a dolphin and it sinks swims up to a enemy ship and sinks it i'm not really convinced by that um, i'm not going to say it hasn't been an idea but I've not seen any evidence of it doesn't, you know, doesn't make sense to a lot of people. But I've got to mention it because there's plenty of rumors about it. So in the Soviet Union, there were two programs. The first was started in the Black Sea uh, in 1973, and then the Arctic program started in 1984. I'm actually going to cover the Arctic first because the action, of course, currently is in the Black Sea. So we'll come back to that. That's where... The, uh, the dolphins are currently at war, as it were. So the Arctic one is focused on the Mamansk uh, Marine Biological Institute. And that is really close to Kolar Peninsula where there's a lot of Navy bases. Um, I haven't highlighted all of them, but these are submarine bases of interest and so on. Um, currently, there are there's a main base, and then there's a breeding program, and there's a secondary base at Lenyaguba, which is particularly interesting. So there's they're deployed in the Kolar Peninsula alongside the submarine bases and so on. This is the main base. I'm not even going to attempt to say that name. Apologies. You can see a seal there on the jetty. It's mainly with seals, but also beluga whales. You can see it's wearing a harness and so on. This is what the base looks like on Google Earth. So satellite imagery, you can see the beluga whales have hexagonal pens and the seals have square pens. We're confident of that. Um, this particular base is just about marine mammals, but nearby there's a spy submarine base, also where the ship, spy ship Yantar is based. That's quite famous on its own right. Um, this is a really secret base and it's the home of the Guji. So G-U-G-I, which stands for the main director of undersea research spy missions basically and it, if you've got really keen eyes and you look at the top of the photo there is a beluga whale pen and that was moved there in uh you know a couple of years ago of particular interest this whale um known as uh vladimir um that's actually a play on words because the first four letters, I don't know how you pronounce them in Norwegian, but it means whale. In 2019, it defected, as it were. It turned up in Norway. It was in the news. You might remember it. It, it, it almost certainly, I'd, I'd say it certainly was a Russian Navy trained beluga whale. We can speculate its mission. I think there's some really good research going on. I don't want to um, give away too much. I know that people have researched it a lot and have yet, yet to reveal more information about this. So that was definitely in the news. But coming back, the Black Sea um, program was a bit different. I say it's near Sevastopol. It's in a harbour a few miles down the coast. Um, this is completely militarised area. I mean, it, there's lots of houses as well, as well, of course, but there are a lot of bases, missile sites and so on. So Sevastopol, the military aspect takes up the whole peninsula, the whole headland. 
close up of the base again, you've got the same sort of arrangement with dolphin pens. There are some beluga whale pens there. There have been beluga whales there in the past. I don't know if they're still there or not. Um, but you see these mobile dolphin pens, the smaller ones, um, which are free floating and can be anchored in in anywhere essentially within the uh, the right depth of water. And that's the sort of thing that's been deployed to um, to the entrance of the harbour down the road. This is some a photograph of them exercising a few years ago. Um, the white flag at the back of the ship, that is with the blue cross, that is uh, the Russian Navy ensign. You can see the dolphin, of course, um, is there in the water. The white object on the on the rib uh, boat is going to be a sort of stretcher like device for carrying and offloading the, the dolphin might have a sort of tent aspect to it. So you put the dolphin in potentially. Object of interest, these mobile pens have been deployed before. Here they are in Tartus. Now, Tartus is a naval base in Syria, in the Mediterranean, where the Russian Navy deploys a lot of ships and submarines, as you can see. And there's the pens. They were only there for a few months from 2018, 2019. Um, but it, it shows them being deployed. And I actually think that they might be the exact same pens that are now in Sevastopol Harbor, these mobile pens. How the dolphins got there, possibly by air, possibly by ship, although I couldn't tie any ship movements to the uh, deployment. Back to Sevastopol, here's another candid image. There it is. How I saw it was in low resolution satellite imagery. Um, that little blob there, I thought that looks like a dolphin pen. Let's get some high resolution. So here's a, a slightly better image of it. Um, this is what open source intelligence is about, scrolling through, finding things. Obviously, context experience helps. It was indeed um, a pen. This is actually historic imagery. One of the things I did was I checked on Google Earth and scrolling back, I found that in the past there had been dolphin pens deployed there. And you can see the same truck arrangement, but this imagery is, is from uh, a while back. Um, so it's not the first time they've actually been deployed there, but what's significant is they're not permanently deployed there and they've been moved there to coincide with the conflict. So based on satellite imagery, we don't get imagery every day, but from the ones I've seen, I can tie it down to approximately the 24th of February, which is when the war started. They deployed the dolphins there. So why do they put the dolphins there? So really obvious reason is counter diver operations. It doesn't really make sense from a mine clearing operations perspective. It doesn't really make sense from a retrieval of objects. There's no reason why they wouldn't operate from their main base, which is only a couple of miles down the, the coast. How counter diver works the main way. The dolphin, as you probably know, has excellent natural sonar. So it can use it's like echolocation to detect things and it can detect a diver. The diver doesn't even know it's coming and it's equipped with a harness and typically it will d dive at the back of the diver. We don't know the full details of the Russian training program, but assuming that it's similar to what we understand of the of the uh, US program, it would attach something to the back of the diver. And this would act as a boy, and the diver would end up being more or less immobilized. And they wouldn't be able to remove it from their back realistically. Um, the dolphin's gone. The diver wouldn't stand a chance. Um, the dolphin can outswim a diver in every respect. We'll look at that in a moment. Of course, then the, the you've got a boy floating there, and the friends, yeah, you know, the, the defenders, the friends of the uh, of the dolphin come along and if they think that the diver is an enemy diver they can deal with the diver and you're dead so simplistically they could just drop a grenade over onto your head um the of interest for russian defense you're probably aware they've actually got a range of weapons they can use they've got underwater assault rifles or pistols um, which fire sort of darts 
you've got handheld grenade launchers, a couple of types, and you've got really even heavier ones on ships, which can go quite far. These devices would obviously be deadly to a diver. And if you're marked on a buoy, they know exactly where you are. You're, you know, you're dead. Of interest, another way to kill divers, of course, is to tow a net with shark hooks in it and just drive over them. And uh, that would that would work. And that, that's a serious tactic, by the way. Yes, that's been done. The reason you mark divers is because dolphins cannot tell friend from foe. They could mark a friendly, in this case, Russian diver. Um, so it's very dangerous to give the dolphin the ability to kill. However, there is plenty of talk out there that dolphins can also be used to actually deliver a lethal uh, effect on the diver. How that worked, the exact same detection, the exact same training, but instead of a, a boy being attached, a sort of a gun would be triggered. And this is typically going to be a compressed air dart that injects compressed air into the target. Um, we also hear talk of them being trained to remove mouthpieces and so on. And all of that is plausible. Um, and the diver is dead there and then. But as I say, the problem there is friend or foe. So it could be very dangerous um, if you've got other people in the water for any reason. Um, friendly divers doing, you know, uh, inspecting the bottom of another, a, a ship or something like that. Hey. So we've talked a bit about why they deployed there is a defensive as aspect to Sevastopol Harbor. Sevastopol Harbor is out of range of Ukrainian forces. There has been some something flying over there because there was an air defense so missiles launched against something, but uh, we haven't seen any missiles landing there. It's really out of range. So the ships, when they're in Sevastopol Harbor, are really safe and feel safe. We can see that because they use very predictable mooring points and so on. The dolphins protect them against combat swimmers or frogmen in old, old terms. And that's a, a tactic that Ukraine might be considering. The dolphins would be a defense against that. And mention it's not just dolphins that are used. You've got beluga whales, sea lions and seals. All of them have pros and cons, of course. All of them are better than a human in every underwater uh, respect, except judgment. So the operating depth of a beluga whale is 640 meters. For a diver with a what we call a pure oxygen rebreather, which is a sort of standard military diving equipment, they can only dive to 15 meters. Yeah. Um, 15 meters is much deeper than most recommend. So if you've got an opinion on 15 meters versus seven meters, whatever, yeah, um, well, you can comment, but don't expect me to want to argue it with you. It doesn't really matter. It's not 640 feet, uh, meters rather. Swimming speed, the slowest is the beluga whale with 15 knots. If you're a really good uh, swimmer, you can do one to two knots um, and you can do it for a mile or so. So dolphins are incredibly good um, versus human in every in every sort of performance respect. It's not just Russia and America, of course, that are using them. So the main operators, Russia, America, you've got Russia using beluga whales, also dolphins and seals. You've got the US now standardized on dolphins and sea lions. So slightly different choice of animals, slightly different temperatures, locations, and so on. Additionally, um north korea and israel likely use dolphins and again you can find out more about this on my website it's treated as unconfirmed but likely north korea is another one of the ones that i found um israel yeah i think everyone agrees they've got them but not much is said about it um i think that's everything i've got to say hopefully it was interesting hopefully it's useful um check out my website for a general guide on these animals um, check out U.S. Naval Institute News for the original article on it. Thank you very much.